Hi, everybody. My name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And he said that from a distance because he wasn't here. I was out the fire. Oh, he's helping the fire. Yes, we're starting it up early morning, and it is fire out in the middle of the jungle trying to uh, get some water heated up. That is life in the jungle, and how are you guys out there? Much love to every one of you guys. Thank you for joining us. It is our privilege to hang with you, and we are privileged by you guys hanging with us. And we thank you guys very, 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 very much for being part of our family, hanging out, doing the do. It is a sun day on the Gregorian calendar. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good. Is everyone awake? Yeah, I'm awake. Yeah. Bushy-tailed, wide-eyed? No. No, not quite. Eli's not. He's like squinting over there. Can yeah, he? barely awake. He's barely awake. What do we do about that? Time to Maybe we should like throw water on him in the mornings. Yeah, throw water. How do we wake you up? In a way, just kind of, just kind of live it, give it as. I don't know how many of you guys out there have a really hard time waking up. A couple of you guys, uh, a couple of the guys here have a hard time waking up. Some really have a hard time waking up. But that's just life. All right, gentlemen, we are heading into the writings of Abraham. Can anybody give me a quick lowdown uh, of the showdown of what went down town? Um, a lot of chapters talked about um, Yishak being born, him, and then as he grew up, he caused contention between him and Ishmael, and he broke one of Ishmael's arrows, and Ishmael hated him because that Ishmael aimed a bow to kill him, but who was sought from his heart, so he didn't kill him. Sarah saw it, and Abraham and Sarah said he needed to go out of the camp, and Yahuwah said that he was going to bless Ishmael for Abraham's sake, and uh, Isaac grew up, and when he was weaned, he started learning the Torah and how to be a priest. Yeah. All right. And so before I start, I wanted to, to guide everybody over here. If you have not downloaded the free PDFs, the, there's free PDFs of the entire scriptures along with the Apocrypha of what we are reading right here. Um, these are uh, free PDFs. You can get them, share them around. Very small and download compared to the quality and the amount of words that you get in there. And it is the word of our creator. And for anybody who wants to help this channel, and when we I say help this channel... There's never any kind of money that ever goes to us. We, we don't have a donation for us. There's no, we don't make any money on the word of Yah anywhere at all. And any donations that come in go directly to the Yah's scriptures. And for $59, we are getting ready to get these scriptures. We already put in our first payment into India. And um, they are, they ordered the paper for us. And they are, work, we're working on the front cover of it. There's 103 books in this. <clears throat> now, this book, because it is a large print, is huge. We're talking the size of War and Peace. We're talking the size of one of these medical uh, PDRs, the, the personal desk references that the, the doctors use with as all their drugs is like four inches thick. This is a big book. This book also has three uh, bookmarks in it so that you are able to basically get three different areas in there that you, can, you don't get lost. And you can have all this kind of stuff right there. And it is available right now. It will not be... Shipping until the end of February or March is when we expect to see these in and around. So we have uh, the family who will be putting these out. And if you guys would like to help, what our plan is, is for every scripture that is purchased, we are trying to get one full scriptures, this same 103 book, into prisoners, into prisons for prisoners. And um, that is our hopes and dreams and goals. And thank you very, very much to everybody who has purchased scriptures already and got them on the list. And we, we really, really appreciate you guys. Okay. <clears throat> We are on chapter 132, right, fellas? Yep. Okay, here we are. Is everyone ready? Yep. All right. Let's make it happen. When Yitchak was 37 years old, he was, the, he was one day talking with his brother, Yishmael. And Yishmael was boasting of his righteousness, saying, I was 13 years old when Yahuwah spake to my father to circumcise us. And from that time, I have consecrated my soul unto Yahuwah and kept his commandments <clears throat> as they have come unto me from my father. But Yitchak answered him, saying, Sorry. <clears throat> has a minor cough going on. Why dost thou boast in thy righteousness? For none of us are without sin, and all mankind is as nothing before Yahuwah. And we must be prepared to be offered upon the altar as a sacrifice to our Elohim with joy that we can glorify him before our calling and election is made sure. So we know this, this <clears throat> talked about during the thing, but I feel like it was a little different, and I think it was Jasher or Jubilees, one of the books. It talks about how they're 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 like sitting there like having a little bit of argument, and he goes, "If I if it, if it came to it, I would I would be I would be sacrificed to Yahu if I asked if he wanted me to do." So I feel like he was a little bit more different than this. Like he he like he like was like boasting, saying he would get sacrificed more like instead of when he prepared to be an 
offering. Yeah, and so this was his idea. This was um, Isaac's idea, right? This is not, a, you know, a lot of a lot of times what we get from the regular scriptures is we get a part of the story, but we don't know all the details. We don't know exactly how it went down, and these are these um, side side amenities to our meat and potatoes. Okay. This saying of Yitchak's pleased Yahuwah, and Yahuwah has visited me, saying, Thy son Yitchak have I seen, and his heart is right before me, and he is cling and pure, and, ex and an acceptable sacrifice unto Yahuwah. Okay, a quick note. Um, before this, it was a lot like Job, uh, Satan comes to Yahuwah, he goes, what are you doing here? And he goes, I seek you, I can devour. And he goes, he looked at my servant, Abraham, he goes, yeah, that's the sacrifice, Isaac. Hold on, you, you haven't read the story. It's just about to come up. Oh, okay, I didn't. I, I, thought, <clears throat> I didn't think he was uh, gonna go into that because he, yeah, who already came to him and was like, I gotta you, sacrifice. You son. just crushed the storyline, oh, friend. Sorry, guys. That's called a spoiler alert. So, okay. Sorry, anyway, guys. so <laughs> in fact, it's right here. Okay, and Yahuwah touched the eyes of my understanding and that they were open, and I saw the sons of Elohim gathered in council with the Father, and Hillel also was among them. Okay. What do we make of Hell El? I, we know it's Satan, right? But I mean, this is a different name than any other. Uh, we don't. We have we seen this name anywhere in scriptures at all? I don't think so. I don't recall anything. I'm really. That means Lucifer. Does it? I think so. Yeah. So well, it's Hell El. Um, okay. <coughs> Excuse me again. And Yahuwah said to Hell El, "Surely thou hast been abroad in the earth, trying the hearts of men. Whom hast thou found standing in his integrity?" Who should be further tried to know whether he be thine or mine? Hillel replied, Hast thou considered Abram and Sarah in Yitchek? For I am, I am unable to lead them into sin in whatever matter I place before them. Okay, I think this is a <clears throat> this is a very interesting conversation right here. That we are able to see some of the the intent of uh Hasatan, right? The 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 his, his intent right here, for I am unable to lead them into sin in whatever matter I place before them. So from those words alone, we can kind of gauge the amount of power and the strength that Hasatan has, that he is able to literally put stuff into us that is going to test us. And um, he keeps notes, right? He keeps notes of it. He's, he, he knows who are his and he knows who are yours. Okay, so let us go six. They are united in perfect bonds of love and purity. And even Abram hath united all his family again, which was divided. Okay, and that's a, that's a huge thing right there, right? Um, Satan talking about the family divided, right? And so when Hagar was driven off, this must have been a great thing for uh, Hasatan, right? He must have been cheering them on. And uh, because from, from this text right here, you can see that uh, he was upset that they've united his family again, which was divided, right? And so the family is one of these things that is so important, not just from a structural standpoint, but from a, a creation of Yah, that he built these families and, and us into this kind of a, a system for support. Eight, and Yahuwah said unto Hillel, were I to say unto Abram, bring up Yitchak thy son unto the high place and offer him as a burnt offering unto me, he would not withhold him from me nor would Yitchak refuse to be offered. And Hillel answered Yahuwah, Speak now unto Abram, as thou hast said, and we shall see whether his heart is perfect with Yahuwah, or whether his end shall be in my reign. Now do you think <clears throat> Hasatan was able to be where the boys were when they were talking about this, that Isaac was the one that brought this up? Do you think he knew this at all? He may have, or maybe he had a demon around or some kind of thing that re reported to him. Demon snitch or something of the yeah, sort? Yeah, maybe. Is this Josh down here cutting me? That's I it. don't know. That's definitely Josh cutting my legs. Uh, <clears throat> and for those who do not know, I, I, I should be a little bit better about explaining this. We have nine pit bulls. And they come around us at all various times and they sneak under the table where you don't see them. And all of a sudden you will feel a claw on your leg and it will go right down all the way. And the dogs just all ran away. It will go all the way, um, it will go all the way down your leg from the, from the knee all the way down to your, your ankle. And, and that's their love. They're just saying, hey, will you pet us, please? And the dogs just all ran away again. Mr. Cole's out there <clears throat> working the rocket stove trying to get some a little bit of water here for this morning. Um, and the dogs are going crazy. All right. Uh, 134. <clears throat> so yes. we're With these words, the vision was closed to my mind, and Yahuwah said unto me, Abram, take now thy son Yitchak, whom thou lovest, and go to the land of Morat, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountain, which was, which thou shalt see the glory of Yahuwah resting as a cloud. And Yahuwah departed from me and left me to consider these things. 
Now, Sarah's heart was knit unto Yitchak's, insomuch that she kept him by her side whenever possible, and he did sleep upon her bed at night. Wherefore, I thought, how shall I separate Yitchak from his mother Sarah for such a journey, lest her heart be grieved, and she die in her grief? Now, <coughs> excuse me again. Sorry, guys. Man, 37 years old. Um, how old is Sarah at this point? Uh, she's ancient. Yeah, she's 127, I think. I don't know. Does this does this seem odd at this age to hang out in the bed of your mother at this age? Um, I think so. I mean, really close. Seems back strange then. to me. But maybe maybe they're closer. Maybe maybe we are so afar from what should be reality that we think that a thirty seven year old hanging out with mom is is very odd. And maybe it's just a you know a love thing. I get it. Uh, mom and son, and she worked so hard to get him. Uh, but I just, I, she, it just seems like a very, very close relationship, which I guess isn't bad. Three. So I went unto Sarah and comforted her, and afterwards I said unto her, Our son Yitchak, we have taught these many years, and I feel now that I should take him unto Shem and Abar, his son, where he can be instructed by the ancient ones in the mysteries of the ancients, that he may become a perfect servant of Yahuwah, our Elohim. Now, Abram just told a lie. Guys, yeah. we, got, we should address this. Um, well, it seems like we'll kill your son. Right, well, well that, that's the thing. Um, she would never go for that, right? She's like, oh, well, where are you guys going? The only thing that he, 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 he spun a yarn, right? And maybe he had a plan afterwards to take him there. I think he does. I he think. does take him there afterwards, yeah. But as far as his intent right now, he's going to slay his kid. So this is a barefaced lie. But so. he, but yeah, he knows y'all promised him uh, generations through Isaac. So maybe he knew they bring him back from the dead or something like that. Maybe, yeah, ab absolutely. But um, the thing was, was he taking him to Shem and Eber? Not immediately. That's a barefaced lie. So what, what do we make of this, Father Abraham? Uh, no, I, spinning I, I, your arms. I feel like, like Abraham. Well, the first time he told the lies. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. He and, he and Isaac will tell some lies over the time. Yeah. So I mean, it seems like, and this is what you what would you call this one a white lie? One of these little white lies. I don't know. This one's like get, oh, about to get someone we up, killed. We end up with someone dead after this. So <laughs> this, so like, uh, yeah. Dead. Imagine, um, imagine what Sarah would say. If he did go up there and slaughter the son and then come back home and he had said that he, where, where is he? Is he at Shim and Ebers? Can you tell? Can we go see him? Uh, not exactly, right? <clears throat> it wouldn't go down well. So anyway, four. Sarah replied, thou hast spoken well, my Edom. Go now and do all that thou hast said. Only let the lad remain not too long apart from me, for my soul is bound to his soul with a perfect love from Elohim. And I answered Sarah saying, my daughter, let us pray to Yahuwah, our Elohim that we may yield to his will in all things, and that all things will work together for our good. I think we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> Those are some decent discussion points on this. Um, uh, you know, the, I guess part of his uh, clearing up a little white lie is that he says here, um, let us pray to Yahuwah the Elohim, <laughs> may, we may yield to his will in all things, and that all things will work together for our good. Sarah had absolutely no idea what that meant. And, um, you know, this is, this is very interesting. You know, this is very, very interesting. The, um, you know, <laughs> we all fall from great. We all fall, right? I mean, if Father Abraham is having to spin a yarn to, um, to, to get to the point where he can take his kid up to kill him. Um, and, you know, his, his Sarah, I don't think Sarah would ever be okay after this. I, I don't think she, would, she and he would ever be, like, good. Maybe. Um, well, Abraham has the right words. I mean, well, uh, she, they don't see him alive again. She yeah, died. right. She dies before they ever make it. Yeah, they're, they're dead. This is the last time they ever see her. And so um, this is interesting. This is her final moments. This is in, like, sadness. You know, the last time she ever sees her kid, she's just, she's just very, very, very sad. Okay. All right. Well, we will continue on with the trip tomorrow, how this goes down and everything. And we thank you all for being part of our family. We thank you all for hanging out with us. And we hope you have a wonderful day. And that's it. Shalom. All right. Shalom. Shalom.